What is up, my G's and ladies as well? You feel me? Your boy, laid back truck at seven. I'm back at it, man. Lipstick Lisa account. We about to get it in. Um, let me go ahead and show y'all a little bit what's been going on a little bit. We're going to be streaming live from my truck. I'm inside my semi right now. This is a Peterbilt 579. And um, right now, we're going to go ahead and get into our run. We're going to finish up our run right quick. Uh, let me go ahead and just give you a little light. Boom, right there. It's your boy right here, man. And so we're going to turn that back off. It's a little dark. But I'm in the truck stop right now, people. Okay? We're down here in Houston, Texas. I hope y'all are excited for a Texas release uh, of Texas. I am. I'm ready for it to come on out and be released. Let me go ahead and show y'all the truck stop. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Let's see where we at with it. Let me go here just so I can make sure y'all can see what's up, man. Look at this. Man, we got a truck right next to us, the International over here. We got a Cascadia out there. We got all the truck stop, man. So y'all can see. Let me go out here real quick. I'll show y'all the outside of Carolina Blue. Man, look at it, bro. That's Carolina Blue. That's Carolina Blue, y'all. That's my truck right there, man. Shit, look at that. Right there. All right, man. Let's get back to it, man. Live streaming. Right now, Houston, Texas. Man, it's your boy. All right, let me get reset up, man. Let me get reset up for y'all. As we uh, get into it right quick, we're going to finish our Montana run. We already picked this load up, and we're going to Boozman, Boozman, Montana. All right, we started out in Arizona, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, to be exact. Let me see, turn it out like that. That better for y'all? See you, little boy? You see, man, you see me? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, we're going to finish up. We're going to talk about Montana. We're going to talk a little bit about Texas. You know, also, we're going to talk about God. That's how we do it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but let's get back to this, man. If you're not familiar with Listic Lisa, this account, man, this is my most, uh, you know, prominent account, if you would. Okay, we've got 15 garages, 54 trucks, got 10 trailers, and we got 54 drivers. She nets at a mil, a one mil, a 1.9 million every seven days so let's stick lisa she's got a a, a a nice company going on right here as you can see in the background the truck we're going to be driving is the brand new western star right there i want to say it's the 57 model and um it's beautiful man we got the detroit 600 in it with the detroit transmission you can only do the detroit engine and transmission with this truck it actually pulls pretty well too as you can see at the top, cruising Montana, um, this um, this challenge I already completed it. But let me tell y'all what's been happening with Montana. So we're here, over here in uh, in Utah, I want to say, yeah, Utah, and we're gonna be starting from that this city right here, Saline. Salina, whatever you say it. And we're going all the way up here to Boozerman, Montana. And I don't know if y'all been having this problem with Montana. Um, I've never had this problem with any other state. But Montana, when I got Montana, uh, 
I lost a lot of roads. So I couldn't take loads into Montana and I couldn't get out of Montana. Or if I could, I can only go over here to Wyoming. And then once I got to Wyoming, I couldn't go nowhere else. So I had to quick travel myself into Montana. And that's how I got these cities right here discovered. As you can see, they're like um, the yellowish color. That means I've been there. Of course, these two over here and this one up here I hadn't been to yet. But as you can see, the roads are gray. Those means the roads I had to travel on. Now, with all these other states that I already had, I've traveled all these roads that you see in gray. But because of when I got Montana and I had mods in, uh, it, it basically, the road would stop here and the road would stop there. And I couldn't get in. The Montana and it was like that all the way around as you can see as I'm coming down through the other states to show you on the map if you're experiencing this problem and I emailed SES you know saying and they're gonna want you to screenshot you know your game and all that you're gonna have to take all your mods out that's just it take all your mods out like I did to restore everything and uh, it should bring all your roads back um, the problem with that is, though, is you can see over here at the top left, it says 58% uh, percent explored. It should be higher than that. But because Montana, um, when I added this state and it took away my roads, it also took away other roads that I already discovered so or explored. So, you know what I'm saying? Just know that, you know, you're going to have to kind of redo all that again. But anyway, we got... Our cargo that we're finishing up is a heavy bulldozer, once again, from Phoenix, Arizona to Boozeman, uh, Montana. It's going to pay us 116500 you know what I'm saying? We're getting it in. So let's go ahead and get on into it, man, and uh, get trucking. We lock the door, you know what I'm saying? Because we don't want no prowlers, you know what I'm saying? Shoot. All right. So anyway. We're about to get it in, as you can see. Oh, hold on a second. For some reason, I am not connected. Oh, I guess I wouldn't be because I forgot to plug up my joystick. So, y'all don't I'm try to roast your boy. Remember, I'm in my big truck. So, you know, got the Xbox controller. I can switch the color to you, feel me? You know what I mean? Whatever we want to do. Oh, no, I don't want to do it. Whatever, you get the point. So we're going to roll like that. And um, we're going to have a good time. So once again, let's see. Let's see. Let me take these off for a second. Let me show you what we're looking like. We got the bulldozer. And we got our truck. You know what I'm saying? Uh, nice truck right here. I have to say, uh, let's go on the inside. We're going to crank her up first. Show you all the inside. Look at that. Nice dash, too. Um, these aero trucks, uh, if you don't know what an aero truck is, they just cut through the air better, these, the, the way they're designed. On the game, if you noticed, um, nice built-in microwave. On the game, like if you see the consumption to the right on the dash next to the RPM and all that, that right there, man... Um, that would actually really allow you to get some really good fuel mileage with these trucks like this. You should compare the two for, you know, a truck like that black truck right there, that W9 versus this. And I'm, I'm telling you, you're going you're gonna to see you get better fuel mileage with this truck. Now, it's not like drastic, but it is a, a noticeable thing. I don't have to fill up as much as I did with the W9. But anyway, you know what I'm saying, or the Peterbilt. We on the road, y'all. As y'all can see, we're getting it in. I had to take all that out, man. Those mods, because it just killed the game. Now, I didn't try to put any of them back in to see which ones would like actually work or not. My guess is the ones from SCS from um, Steam Labs, or excuse me, Steam, excuse me, 
um, they're probably going to be the best bet. But I don't know about your game, but my game has updated like a zillion times. So I don't even know if those mods are going to even work, even if it says 1.45. So there's been so many 1.45 updates, it's, it's unreal. So anyway. <laughs> Keep that in mind, you know what I'm saying? Your game might start doing some crazy stuff, or you might lose some roads. But I'm excited for Texas. I can't wait for them to release that one. I'm in Texas right now, down by the Houston area, and um, I'm ready to see what they're going to do with that, uh, that state. Uh, I live in Texas, so hey, they got to come right, man. So it's got to definitely be off the hinges and so far they've delivered on everything in terms of the states i like the the scenery all that good stuff and so yeah i like it man i i, I enjoyed it and uh man as we we cruise on we got our oversized freight once again the bulldozer is on the back it doesn't have the blade on her Somebody else gonna haul that up there to him. But the main piece is this bulldozer itself. And it's looking right nice on the back of this truck. As you can see, she pulled pretty good, y'all. So she's she's a 12 speed. That's all they give you is the 12 speed automatic. Uh, Detroit transmission with the Detroit engine. The DD15, that's 600 horsepower, is the highest you can go. And it's doing really well, as you can see. We're rolling hard, too. <laughs> we are rolling, man. I pray y'all having a blessed week, man, and enjoying yourself. And, uh, man, this dude just left out of here. Sorry, that's why I'm all over the road. This dude just parked his truck and left. And he got his, his car smoking like a mother. <laughs> I mean, mad smoke pouring out. So you might want to get that looked at, my G. It ain't supposed to do that. I think I got my cruise control set up too high. I'm going to come down one notch. Yeah, I am. I'm rolling too high. But we're going to come down another notch, too. There we go. I don't know if y'all know, but you can do resume on your... The cruise control and that's a game changer for me because I didn't recognize that I can do that. I've had this game for a long time. I'm just like, shoot, set it and forget it. <laughs> Get going and press resume and it'll do itself. So that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? So this truck in real life would definitely come like this, maybe with a smaller engine as well. I'm pretty sure of it. And then, uh, but of course, it will have the 12-speed uh, automatic transmission in it. And like I said, it's pulling this no problem. So let's let's check out our load info as well as our damage. So we got 2% damage on the trailer, and that's our load information, y'all. This bulldozer by itself weighs 89,000 pounds. That's not including the truck, so we're well over 100,000 pounds right now, rolling without no problems whatsoever at 80 miles an hour in the 70s. We're doing quite well. As you saw, she didn't uh, hesitate to get all the way up here to 80 like that. We actually were going almost 90. <laughs> but yeah, um, I had traffic in there in, in the game. I've ha I had the uh, Z mods engine and sound packs and all that and I had also uh, you know the, the rims and stuff like that I had to take all that stuff out I even had American truck stop um, I like that mod because it fills up the truck stops a little bit more and like the rest areas and even the gas stations that you go to uh, so it, it makes it a little bit more challenging and more realistic in that sense uh, we did have real logos and billboards and all that stuff in there. All that stuff had to come out. So uh, it 
it really stunk a little bit to take all that out. I did not want to, but that was the suggestion. And before I got the suggestion, I was like, from uh, SES, when they replied to me, I was like, let me take the mods out. Y'all probably saw one of the cats, because I just had to move the dagger. Oh, almost hit them. Had to move my, my armrest back. But yeah, so we rocking and rolling. We got a little bit over 600 miles to go. Be almost a full day, pretty much for us as we roll on. I do have fatigue on, and uh, that's a game changer too, because it kind of, it really, uh, I really wanted that realism, per se. Like it's cool to haul a load, but then also I want to, you know, get tired and have to roll throughout the night or something like that at different times where you know actual real truckers would be like myself rolling sometimes and so we had to put the uh, fatigue on and when I first started ATS I didn't have uh, fatigue on for a long time so this is me putting it on now just really getting a grasp on it the way station is open but we do not have to go into it guys but I'm flying like a mud. We got a ticket though. So, 10 miles over. That's all good. Where I'm having to pick up tomorrow in real life is like two miles away from where I am. Uh, this was the closest truck stop for me. So, when I'm staying the night in the truck, you might see my daughter on the top bunk. You know, when my, my daughter Mariah rode with me. And, uh, of course, she got her best buds or cats with her as well. So, <laughs> notice how I put it on her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm not in the truck because the truck is loud on the inside. Uh, you may not be able to hear me talk, but real quick because I don't have my headset and all that good stuff. And let, let's speak on it a little bit. Whoa, slow down. Alright, so we're going to bring it over this way. Uh, I'm going to go inside. Yeah, I got... They left... I took all the mods out, but somehow this mod is still in the game. Where you have to, like, do detours and stuff like that. Even though it's also a feature within the game. But... I had something else in it too where it would create more you know, events, but we got to buy that. We're good. We keep on rolling. As you can see, that weight is starting to you know, give us a little, little test right here with the 600 DD15, but it's all good. We're going to get back up to speed. Should we get through here without hitting if we can? I think we're gonna be good. Ooh, that was a squeeze right there. If I had some overhang, you know, saying that might not have really worked. But we got through, y'all. We good. That's what's up. Let's do a flyby real quick. It is a joy to um, allow the Lord to speak to you, man. The Lord speaks to you in various different ways, but you can't close your heart, though. You know what I'm saying? You can't be a person with a closed heart, heart to heart. You know, um, God is love. God is love. And He loves to protect and bless, you know, even, even people that's not His children. You know, 
uh, with things. You know, we all have been blessed every day, no matter if you realize it or not. You know, if you have breath in your lungs, you're here for a purpose. Uh, I speak from a place where I used to be the depressed and like a worrisome child back in the day when I was younger. Like, but you know, getting to know uh, Jesus is like, man, I open. There's no reason for me to be, uh, like David said, why is my soul downcast? Like, what he was saying, why am I feeling down? You know what I'm saying? But then the next thing he was he said after that was, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to still lift up a praise to God, you know, because he sustains me. You know, he makes sure I'm good. He, he blessed me with everything, you know. And, um, for example... Um, like I said, if, we, if you're still alive, you still are are here for a reason, a purpose. Um, don't let God not use you. Because if God can't use you, then he don't need you. You know, God is not uh, sustained by anything but himself. Uh, we're sustained by God because he allows things to happen on our behalf, whether we ask him for it or not. And as well as, um, for example, oh, look at this bus. Really, guy? Uh, hold on, let me get him one of these. Yeah, you get one of those for that. <laughs> but, you know, he sustains us, man. He makes sure we're good. And if you're, here, if, you're, if you're still breathing, you're here for a reason. And your purpose, you got to find out what that is. What, what do I mean by purpose? Well, God has always given everybody a talent, you know what I'm saying? It could be one talent, it could be five, it could be ten, you know, but what is a talent? Let's break that down. Oh, we got to go in. Wait, put that on. Ooh, look at this, got to slow it down. Oh, the tanker got to go in too. But what is a talent? Um, a talent is something that you're good at, that you're passionate about. Like, for example, a talent can very well be you knowing how to draw. Just this an example. It, you, you, you can know how to draw. You can, man, it takes forever on scale. You can learn, you know, you, you can probably know how to sing, you know. You can, just, you can be a good debater. Like, you can be a lawyer or something like that or... You know, work in Congress. They debate each other all day long. You know what I'm saying? About stuff that don't really help the people a lot of times. You know, that's why we got problems in our country. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. 132 plus thousand pounds. We rolling, y'all. Um, and you can be good at that. Whatever you're passionate about. And what is passion? Let's break that down. Passion is something that you are willing to do even if you don't get paid for it. So, I mean, I drive a truck. That's one of my passions. I like driving, period. You know, it can be my car and stuff like that. A lot of times back in the day, I would just get in my car and I would just roll. You know, I'd just drive and just have a good time by myself or with my wife or my children and we just listen to music or something like that we wouldn't even necessarily go anywhere but i just enjoy driving so much and um i still do um it's the reason why i still drive a truck you know what i'm saying you gotta like driving to drive a truck because you go a lot of places sometimes even if it's places you already been to before um but my one of my passions is driving right so I would do this even if I didn't get paid to do it. I can truly say that. I just enjoy being around, you know, the big trucks, driving them, the smell of the diesel, the smell of that hot, that hot rubber on a hot day mixed with the smell of diesel. That's like, wow, you know, the, the sound of the trucks, you know, all that stuff. Like, that's, I like that, you know, uh, racing, all that stuff. I like all that. So... For me, I would do that even if I didn't get paid. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mechanic work, I like that too. 
Like, I can work on cars. I can't do everything, but I can do a lot. And I enjoy doing it. You know what I'm saying? That's a passion of mine. But I prefer to do that job as a hobby opposed to, you know, something I would do every day. But I would do it even if I didn't get paid. You know what I'm saying? So, but what is your talent? What is your passion? That's what you got to figure out for you. And so long as you know what that is, you have built up treasure within you. You just got to learn how to put it out there so others can, you know, get a, get a, you know, get a sample of it as well as you know what a disciple is? It's a person that teaches other people, you know what I'm saying? Biblically, it will be the word of God and how to be and live for God, right? Well, you can also be a disciple of showing other people how to develop their talents or, you know, they, may, they might find an interest or a liking of you know, the stuff that you know how to do, right? Your talents, your passion. And they'll ask you, well, how do you do that? And you can sh and you can show them how to do it. And that'll be you discipling them or discipleship. You are teaching them. And thus, you are growing and multiplying your talents. You know what I'm saying? Because now you done show somebody else how to be a trucker. Or now you show somebody else how to draw or, or sing or whatever, what you got to do. Now, of course, you also got to have actual talent to sing, right? We know that, all right? But a person can't be taught how to drive a truck or a car or whatever like that. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm gonna go back outside just for the sake of us talking right fast. Uh, you know, you can teach a person, you know, things like that and they don't necessarily have to know how to drive in order to be taught that. You know what I'm saying? If we're talking about driving, but actual singing, you gotta actually have talent to sing. Like you actually gotta be able to sing. All right. Now we all know there's some artists out there that can't sing a lick, and they got you know a record deal. It's just like rappers or you know anybody else, right? We we know that. You know those are the ones that snuck in under the radar, if you would. I guess I don't know what you call it, but they're doing something still that they like doing or they have a passion for that's if they truly like doing it, right and so of course they'll still do these things even if they didn't get paid so there's no reason for you if you a person that is stressed out or worrying or or trying to figure out life and why things is happening to you um and you, and you feel like you're in a slump where you just can't get out. Maybe you need to tap into your passion of what it is that you really like doing and focus on that. You know what I'm saying? And maybe, just maybe, that'll bring a lot more joy to your life. Because once again, you'll be like, I don't even have to get paid for this. Are you serious? Look at this. Hey, look, we go. Look. Oh, my goodness. Should I stop, folks? Look at this. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try to get over. I'm gonna try to get over. We got over. Yo. <laughs> Where did all these way stations come from? Anyway, man, this and the way station is some odd place. I think I gotta make a left turn over this bridge. Let's see. Yeah. Look at that. The INL site. That's the way station. Let's go ahead and make a left over this bridge and go get weighed. But yeah, you know, you you start to have more joy in your life because you're doing something you really want to do. There's a lot of people that have a lot of talent or just a talent and they never tap into it. And then they die with all this potential and all this, you know, you know, loss of dreams and hopes and things like that. And it went to the grave with them. Don't be one of those people. You know what I'm saying? Get out there and 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 do what it is that you want to do in life. 
and enjoy doing it because I know you will enjoy doing it just like me even if you didn't get paid because it's your passion you know what I'm saying and bring a lot more once again joy and even it may not be comfortable at in, in, in the beginning because when I first started trucking like it was tough like I've never been away from my wife you know what I'm saying and I was away from her for 19 days uh, at a college getting my trade for trucking and getting trained how to do this and um, it was tough but and even hey Mariah somebody just jumped out the blue box but even so my drive to be um, you know to have a better uh, life uh, you know career and all that because I was um, working at a Dodge dealer shop I was also working at Office Depot and man like like I dropped the suspension in the front Ooh. anyway and that wasn't paying my bills like that I mean it was paying my bills but I was eating bologna sandwiches and cereal and that's what we had ramen noodles ain't nothing wrong with that I enjoyed all three of those items you feel me but eventually, I wanted steak, eggs, potatoes, you know, stuff like that as well. And, you know, the finer things in life. And don't get me wrong, it's been a, um, a trial for me to, you know, uh, it had its ups and downs, should I say. That's what I'm trying to say. But, because when you first start out, you ain't making all that type of money. You're just not, you know, you're getting paid you know, three, four hundred to five hundred dollars a week. I mean, I don't know nobody that can live off that if you live in by yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you have to pay rent and all that, I don't know how you're living off that. Everything is inflated, especially now. So and believe it or not, they are still truck drivers getting paid that amount of money. But it was tough. But I was seeing something uh, you know, God was blessing me to see something far greater than where I was if I just trusted and believed that this passion that I had within me, that he put in me, this talent, he would let that shine and bless me and my family through that. And it has been a blessing. You know, right now I'm sitting in a Peterbilt that is mine, me and my family's, you know, and it came... You know, it's a long way, you know, to get to this point. And there's other people that want to be in my shoes. So, you know, forgive me if I complained, if you know me and I complained about, you know, certain things that I had to do or whatnot. But, you know, that was just the frustration coming out. And, uh, and you get frustrated, even in past in your passion. So don't let that deter you from not continuing to do it because you're only going to be happy if you're doing that that's just it you can try doing something else i've tried it i've left trucking i went to be a security guard i went did you know i went back to fast food you know like i went and did other stuff and i was just like yo this ain't it you know what i mean so you always gonna find joy and more peace in what it is that the Lord placed in inside of placed inside of you to do all your life, you know what I'm saying, or do for however long in your life, because it's a it's a passion. Whether you got paid for it or not, you'll you'll do it anyway. You know what I'm saying? That's what you should be doing. So that's what I want to encourage you and tell you today. And just know when you step out the pole uh, <laughs> out the pole, I said that all wrong. When you step out the boat, is what I'm saying, like Peter did, right? Because Jesus was walking on the water, and they saw Jesus, but they thought he was a ghost because it was kind of, you know, it was dark and everything. And it was like, yo, they got, they was afraid, they were scared. And when they realized it was Jesus, they, they, uh, Peter said to him, "Would you bid me to come to you?" And he said, "Come." And so he got off the boat and he walked on water. Now remember, there was 12 disciples, 
all 12 of them could have went and walked on the water with you know with peter but the other 11 stayed in the boat and they just watched what am i saying to you don't be one of those 11 that's just standing on the sideline watching when you could have been out there but you didn't you didn't trust god to step out because when you first step out there you may not have everything all together like you may not have you know the money to sustain you to go throughout the months of your life while you're building up this clientele or you know stepping out there to go get that career or whatever it is that it is your passion right because if once again your passion or your talents come in various different forms okay so you got to believe and trust the Lord that he going to sustain you, that he going to keep you straight. And believe me, he did. Peter walked on the water. He walked right over or he was walking up to Jesus and then realized, oh, snap, I'm really walking on water. He took his eyes off God. And when he looked down, he started sinking. And and, and he was like, God, save me because, you know, I'm drowning, you know. And, and Jesus, you know, he picked him up. And he held him. He's like, because he loves you. And like he loves me. He ain't gonna let you drown. That's what that's the other message. He ain't gonna let you drown. That's why it's okay to step out the boat and go do what it is that you you have a passion doing. Right? And then he said this to him. Why did you doubt? See, when you take your eyes off God, you start to doubt. You start to worry. You start to think about all these things, man. Even in your passion, you're going to get frustrated. Because it's not going to be easy. It's not. You know, doing this trucking thing is not easy. I missed a lot of birthdays and anniversaries and other family events and friend events and all that stuff. But... You know what I'm saying? If it's the better you at the end of the day and, and it's better for your family at the end of the day, if you already have a family, you got to keep trucking forward because of the fact that you're not just doing it for yourself. You're doing it for them too. And if you give up, they ain't going to have an example to look at when they step out there into the real world i'm talking about your kids or whatever or your friends or your other family members and be like man how do i do this do i need to have like what do i need to have to to make it or to how can i be strong they're not gonna look to you i'm gonna hit the shoulder y'all i'm doing illegal it's okay they they're not gonna look to you because you gave up you feel me why should they believe you if you gave up? You see what I'm saying? It's going to get tight. Ooh, we made it. Ooh. I ain't want to slow down, y'all. <laughs> we made it. But uh, that's why you don't give up, man. That's why you don't. You know what I'm saying? You believe the Lord that he's going to take care of you and your family and you're going to be all right. And there's no need to worry, you know what I'm saying? Things gonna get tough, it's gonna get, you know, get hard at times, but just know you're gonna be all right. You're gonna be taken care of. And that's all that should matter to you. You know what I'm saying? Besides, you know, uh, looking out for your family and doing all you can for your family, you know what I'm saying? And if you're doing all you can for your family, you know what I'm saying? By continuing on and it's paying off for you and you and you know it's going to pay off for you and your family. Why would you not continue going? Why would you not continue pushing forward so that you and your family can have a better life? You know what I'm saying? Um, as it is, y'all already know, some of y'all living on your own and stuff, it's tough. Like, you know, gas prices is up. Yes, they came down, but they're not you know, down farther, you know, far enough, in my opinion. Um, they they actually, you know, lower gasoline, but diesel prices is still up. You know what I'm saying? 
these big trucks and, and these buses run on diesel, not gasoline. There's a few of them out there, but it ain't very many. And, um, you know, so that's really tough on the industry right now in trucking because more of your paycheck, if you own your truck, is going to fuel costs. And so, I, you know, I pray they get that down, man, for real. But a lot of a lot of these companies, they let's go inside for a hot second. A lot of these companies, companies like oil companies and gasoline companies stuff, they see it as big profit. They know these big trucks are not gonna stop running down the road. Why? Because this is how y'all get your car. This is how you get the groceries in your house. This is how you get lumber to build a house. You know what I'm saying? Cement, all of that stuff is brought by a truck. So they know they can keep the, oh, I should have got off and got some fuel. Look at my fuel. Oh, snap, I'm tripping. <laughs> Man, I'm tripping hard. And I got to go to sleep. All right, look, we might have to go across this dirt right quick, y'all. So... Uh, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to do it unless we're going to run out of diesel. All right? So, we don't want to do that. But anyway, hopefully we can make it. God, dog, did you hear that? Ooh. Keep going. Look at the Detroit puller up there, boys and girls. Oh, we made it. That wasn't too bad. You feel me? We did a couple of illegal things today on this stream, but it's all right. Okay? <laughs> I don't do that in real life. All right, you just know that for all y'all out there. That man, he tried crazy that boy. He's gonna be a professional cop. I am. But on the game, this is the game. All right, so there's the fuel pumps over there. Nice truck stop, as you can see that big old truck stop. Let's get up in here and get some fuel. But man, it's gonna be tough, man. But just know, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done. Everything is going to be good, man. And you're going to be in a far better place than you was if you didn't if you didn't go out there and do that that you know you should have done for you and your family. You know what I'm saying? Or even for yourself if you don't have a family. And thus, once again, bring yourself joy, man. Uh, I pray this blessed you for real. I like talking about stuff like this, man. If y'all like that, man, first of all, come back. Cause it's gonna be some more streams. You feel me? Just like like Craig told Day Day, not Day Day, but uh, Smokey, come back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> come on back, man. Cause if we gonna be talking like this, we gonna play the game, but we gonna be talking like this as well. So why, as you can see on my icon down there by the on the right side, there's a little bed right there that is blue. We're about filled up on need to go to sleep so while we're here we might as well just go to sleep you know what I'm saying so what I'm going to do is since we're gonna to have to go out behind us look at all these trucks in here see the mods is taken out but this is the American truck stop mod right here where all these trucks are spawned up in here and it makes it harder for you to find a parking spot if this was a smaller truck stop, it'd be a little tough, but it's all good. I like it, but um, I don't know what ATS is doing. This is crazy, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and go to sleep real quick. I got the suspension lowered on the front end. Let's see how low she is. Man, let's see if the icon will work so we can go to sleep. I'm going to pull over here where this red truck is. Let's see, got a little trash can right there, some picnic benches. Let's see, let's go like this, because our trailer's super long. See, we got the icon there where we can just stop and go to sleep. So we're just going to go to sleep right here. We're going to set the brake, turn the truck off, get a nice look at her right quick. Ooh, that's a nice truck, y'all. I don't know if y'all like it like I do. I do. I like this truck. Um, it's got the Cascadia body, but that front end and that hood, that grill and all that, that's the Western Star. 
If you don't know, the Western Star Star is made by Freightliner. Okay, so is Sterling, and um, what's the other one? Sterling. Uh, yeah, I want to say Sterling and, and Western Star made by Freightliner. So there you go. But anyway, let's go. Let's go to sleep. What time is going to put us at? Oh, look at that. 4 p.m. and it's raining. <laughs> Woo. All right. So let's go ahead and get those on. Two. Let's get going, y'all. We got to get this load there. Got to finish this up. Look at that scenery, though. That is beautiful. It is raining for real on the game. Hey, let's see. I'm going to get a screenshot, y'all. Look at that. Right when the truck was coming in, that was pretty cool. Alright, the Camaro's going to let us go. Let's go ahead and go then. But yeah, y'all, so... I enjoy it, man, talking about the Lord, man, reading the Lord's word, man. Get into it. If you ain't into it, I don't know what's wrong with you, man. I already know. <laughs> Believe me, I, I used to be a person that, that was into the to, to God like that. I wasn't. I knew who he was, but I wasn't into God like that. You know what I'm saying? Because, I, let's be honest, like all of us, we, we, uh, we are consumed with our own you know, lustful desires. And what I mean by that in the word of in the word of God it says lustful desires. But what it's truly saying is you consume by everything that is not of God. That is going to keep you away from God. And whatever that is, it depends on what type of person you are. If you're a person that like money, you're gonna always be after money. You know what I'm saying? That's all you're going to be concerned with. You ain't going to care about your salvation and, you know, the Lord and all that. You're going to be consumed with money. If, you, if you're if a person that like money and, uh, you know, uh, just, I mean, I want to say the S word, but I don't know if I ever get, <laughs> get a strike. But, you know... Just, you know, the things that satisfy your body, more or less. It could be drugs or whatever. whatever. You're going to be consuming all that, and you're going to put God to the back. Or you're not even going to acknowledge him at all, you know what I'm saying? And so, of course, um, I mean, that's not good for you, man. That's, you're just going down a path of destruction, you know. The, the road away from the Lord is death, you know what I'm saying, and and you, you shouldn't want that for yourself. You shouldn't pursue stuff that is destroying you. You know what I mean? And with God, he's not destroying you. He wants to build you up and make you better. And it only comes from trusting him and just knowing that he has your best interests. Man, I got this bad boy. Man, I didn't, I didn't want to make that turn right there. I was like, yo, I'm going way to the left. But it's all good. We still rallying. Um, we should be in Montana right now, bro. All these trees got a little bit of mountain range going on. Oh, we gotta slow down a little bit. This thing. I don't know if it's the rain as well, but it's like it's almost like it's kind of slippery to the point of the truck is like trying to just force its way not to go around the turn. It just want to go straight. <laughs> But we're pulling this hill right here. See how she do, man. Oh, we're coming up on the Greyhound bus. Let's move on. He might outrun me up this hill, though. Because I'm pulling so heavy. Oh, no, we got past him. Let's get over. Oh, we had to drop the gear. We had 11th gear. Folks, we're down to 160 miles to go, man. We almost got this in the books. We should arrive uh, 
Yeah, it's gonna get it's gonna be dark probably when we get there, but it's it's gonna be all right. But um, we're gonna do our best to put it where they want us to put it. Got the Continental Divide, man. I went over that in real life with this truck right here. Let me tell you, that was an event. It was beautiful, but I am never want to go back up there again. <laughs> We was going up over the mountains and all that. The Colorado, the Colorado, uh, I can't even speak. The Colorado, <laughs> the Colorado Rockies. My God, dude! Got a tongue twister right there. Let's, I just, I'm just not on it right now. I don't know. But, it, but shoot, this truck was struggling, and I had a load on. I think I was like. 40,000 pounds in the box, so I was like 70s, 5,000 pounds growing up this mountain, coming back down. And I smoked my brakes, so if y'all know what that means, it's when you're going down the mountain and you, you're using your brakes too much. And I've had to use it. I was using my Jake brake, you know, which is my engine brake, but it wasn't slowing us down. <laughs> It was like, forget you, we're going. And, uh, man, that was rough. But we got pulled over and stopped and let the brakes cool off. They didn't catch on fire, thank God, but they, they was a little hot. They was smoking a little bit. And uh, let them cool off, and then we you know, left and took off again. But, man. That was a little bit of weight right there. They was like, Jay, you want to run that load again? I was like, nah. <laughs> I was like, no, sir, Bob. Too, that was too much work for my truck. I, my truck don't want to work like that. Neither, neither do I. I was a little stressed out. <laughs> Shoot, man. All y'all driving them cars, y'all don't know what it feels like to go down no mountain. And it's feel like you on a on a rail a roller coaster more or less with all this stuff behind you. And if you mess up in the slightest bit, you going right on off that mountain too. There's some places in the United they ran a red light like a mug. I seen that. But it's some places in the United States that I've driven a truck over mountains that was as bad or more treacherous than that and you can't even see the bottom you know so you go off the side good luck <laughs> there ain't nobody gonna be able to fish you out so that was a that was a time right there but we went through a bunch of indian reserves and realm or should i say reservations and stuff like that it was pretty cool but um we enjoyed ourselves. It was it was awesome. But that load was going. I picked it up in Bakersfield, California, and I took it to uh, Missouri. Uh, I want to say outside of Springfield, Missouri, and that's the route it gave me. Next time, if I were to do the load again, which I don't want to, and told them I wasn't going to, so it won't be a next time, but. I would have went a different way. I would have not went through those mountains. I would have stayed on I, I ten till I got to I twenty, and then kind of come up that way and hit forty somewhere like that. But shoot, that was a a time right there. Let's go ahead and make this right hand turn. Well, folks, we are in this town that we're supposed to deliver to, but somehow it's still saying we're 101 miles away. Let's check the map. As you can see, this place is way the heck over here. <laughs> so that's why we still got 100 miles to go, man. So let's get to it. Let's get it knocked out. Oh, my God. We're taking this to the boom docks, to the woods. Passing that dream burger right there. 
Let me take the mirrors down so y'all can see a little bit more of the city. Look at that, a school with school buses in front of it. That is nice. Uh oh, red light. Red light, green light. Well, hey, type if you ever played red light, green light. Because your boy definitely played that. That was fun growing up. Right. Now y'all can pretty much guess my age at that point. Yeah. And my daughter said, oh. <laughs> We didn't have all that. All we had was Nintendo. You had to blow that up to your to your mouth got you know said started aching and everything. So Duck Hunter was the drink. Duck Hunter was it. Super Mario Zelda. You feel me? Street Fighter. You feel me? I remember when Mortal Kombat was on arcade and that was it. Like, you couldn't play it. <laughs> you couldn't buy the game itself unless you bought an actual arcade machine and put it in your house. That's the only way it came at one point. Yes, folks, we are rolling on through, man. It's still raining. Look at this rain. I'm going to take it a little wide because my trailer is long. Oh, shoot. I wanted to go that way. Get y'all a little outside action. Got a way station over here. Well, it's not that way. Oh, it's right there. Right on over there. You can see it on my map. That truck about to pass it. Let's let's get on up here. See if we can get this uh, force to issue to make this left turn. Oh, they're going to stop for us. We're going to go. Thank you there, Ken Worth and Freight Shaker. As we roll on. I like the new uh, gas stations they put in this game. You know what I'm saying? They look really cool. I think the revamp was very nice. But, here's the but. With those real, you know, companies and stuff like that mod you could put in the game and make it like Walmart or whatever. Man, they had a tough time. That mod had a tough time working because those these gas stations they put in this game really, uh, they really try to keep you from doing that. <laughs> Let's just say it like that. So... Ooh, that's a nice river right there, man. I'll tell you, this is some nice scenery, y'all. Now, I've, I haven't been to Montana in real life driving a truck. I've been pretty much every state in the United States other than Montana and, of course, Hawaii and uh, Alaska, but... Why the you know most beautiful state to me when I was driving uh, really far was uh, Washington State. Really, really beautiful. Washington State is. It's, it's kind of resembles this right here. Just more woods. <laughs> they got much trees up there, and you're gonna see much animals up there too. It is not uncommon to see bears and, and moose and elk and all that just roaming around having a great old time deer everything just look at that Ooh, that nice waterfall you will see all that
this is going to be a good test for this truck right here because um, I, I completed that cruising uh, Montana challenge with this truck and um, you know it had it had a few hills or whatever in it nothing real steep but it seems as though this this may get a little tight up here Look at that river right there. Like some great water rapids right there. That looks gangster. Oh, that's a nice tree that's all broke up. It's dead. That's pretty cool. Man, look at this rain. This don't make no sense. Wow, this is something. Got the flagpoles moving. Let's go on the inside. Oh, press the wrong one. Quick, quickly, quickly. Wow, what a save right there, folks. Man. Look at my miles per gallon right now. It's 2.9. This is big. Make a right hand turn. 41 miles away, uh, more than halfway off that hundred. Oh, Yellowstone straight ahead. Oh, snap. I'm definitely going to want to visit that soon. We will definitely have to visit that. Not in this stream, though. We're going to get this one done and in the books, and we're going to call it. But man, that is awesome. So Quake Lake is 14 miles this way, and then I think it said Ennis is this way, 34 miles. So that'll put us in a whole nother town, even though it says this is Boozermark. So it's actually going to be Ennis, Montana is where we're going. Wow, look at this, man. Look at that water spray off the tires. Oh, we got some lightning. Yeah, I like that, y'all. Oh, a daggone tree that fell down. Ooh, look at that. Once again, y'all, if y'all like the stream, man, you like the talks that we had, you know, about your talents, and passion the Lord most importantly come back and enjoy more of this like seriously come back and enjoy more uh, more of this let's see what's over here oh it's a viewpoint let's go over here real quick we're almost there 21 miles let's make a little baby detour you know what I'm saying come back and enjoy yourself because I enjoy y'all once again I, this is one of the things I like doing it's definitely a passion of mine, something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Finally figured out what I needed to do to do it. I had to shout out, you know, King Lion for that. I saw him at Best Buy. Uh, if you don't know who King Lion is, go check out his uh, YouTube channel. He talks about a lot of comics and games and stuff like that. But, man, he was talking to my kids and he was really trying to you know tell them is this their time to shine right now if they really wanted to do streaming and stuff like that and we all enjoy it all of us look at that view down there that's the road down there that we was on y'all we're gonna get back to it but let's get over here to this viewpoint i'm gonna drop the suspension in the front just give it that more extra look gotta turn the engine off of this let's do it Big Sky Country, y'all. This is Earthquake Lake. Earthquake Lake. Wow, that is something. Just get a couple of screenshots, you know, cut scenes, should I say, of this right here. Woo! I ain't go front. This is a state I do want to actually go to in real life, but because I definitely want to go to Yellowstone 
It's one of the places I've always wanted to go to. So hopefully, you know, the Lord willing, I'll be able to go check that out with my family and myself. You know what I'm saying? So look at that lake. Ooh, that's nice. I have to say, they all did they self. I had to take a lot of man hours to get that right. Look at the stars in the sky, y'all. I don't know if y'all noticed that part, but I do. That's nice. All right, so let's get back to it. Let's finish this load, shall we? You know what I'm saying? All right, we'll just get on out of here, man. All right, so we rolling. Me and this extra long trailer. I like the lights and the side grill on this truck. That is nice. I do like that. Let's give it some engine brake going downhill. Now remember, we're extra long, so we have to give ourselves room to get around the turns, all right? So I'm not just driving on the wrong side of the road to be doing it on purpose. As you can see, this trailer is really whoa. <laughs> if I don't do that, I'm gonna clip this uh, guardrail. We don't want to do that. So ain't no traffic that way. Ain't no traffic going that way. So we're gonna have to go into the other side. Make sure we clear. We're good. Look at that. Woo! Nice. We'll put those back up. Yeah, we have more talks. And this is just off the head, man. Off the dome, you feel me? Like, I wanted to talk about something meaningful to help you. You know what I'm saying? Not just you. It's for myself, too. I'm talking to me, too. Because it's, you know... It's good to hear it yourself, you know what I'm saying, as well. Don't ever get to a point where you feel like you can't learn that, you know what I'm saying, no matter how old you get, because then you really, you truly lost, man, and you you at a point where you can't be uh, coachable or you can't learn any anything else because you have reached your capacity to want to. And when, you, when, you, when it's like that, you can never grow to so, something much more, you know what I'm saying? Because you're always going to be, it's always about you at this point, you know what I'm saying? And what you think should happen on your behalf. And not everything you think is correct, you know what I'm saying? And you just got to be uh, comfortable in your, your shoes, your own shoes to really embrace that. A lot of people don't embrace that because they're too prideful, you know what I'm saying? But you got to let that pride and that stubbornness come off you so that you can hear and that you can see. So we are here, folks, at the place. You know what I'm saying? We have made it. We're in actual Ennis, Montana, but it's not an actual town or city. So we're in Boozerman. All right. So let's, let's get here. There we go. All right, so they want it right there beside the warehouse, which is fine by me. And it looks like three loads are here, as you see right there in the dock doors. But we may not pull that at all, but we might. Just because why drive all the way back with no load? But we'll figure it out. We'll see. Let's get her in there, man. Drop that suspension. Woo! As y'all can see, she pulled quite well, y'all. So if you was concerned about getting this truck, man, this is a good truck to have. You can have a lot of fun with it. You can keep up with people. And just like that, we pulled on into the spot. We can pull up just a little bit. Look at that, y'all. Let's stick Lisa. You can see her right there. She's doing it, y'all. You feel me? Hey, look, man. If y'all like the content, man, please once again come back. But as it is what it is, yo, I thank you for showing up, man. And um, God bless you. Have a blessed day. 
this right here is Arizona, you know what I'm saying, to Montana. And that's what we got paid. And this is all our, you know, respect points or experience, if you would. And wow, look what we're doing, man. King of the road, or in her case, queen of the road. Good job, Lipstick Lisa, getting it knocked out. You know what I'm saying? And we about to be Audi 5000, you know what I'm saying? So once again, have a blessed day. Thank you for checking in with your boy, man. Laid back truck at seven, you know what I'm saying? Once again, what up, little Italy? You know what I'm saying? A li little Italian lady. You know what I'm saying? Hey, appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? What's that, then? You know? So, anyway, y'all, have a blessed night. God bless. We out right here from my truck, inside the truck, live streaming in Houston, Texas. Holla at your boy, Layback Truck at 7.